Welcome to the third episode in a Legendarium series about England after 1066. In part three, The Harrying of the North, we will learn how King William faced the greatest challenge to his rule yet when a mass uprising erupted in the north of England with international support. During the Great Norse Invasions of England in the 800s, Viking warlords established themselves as landowners, tradesmen, and even earls within England. When the House of Wessex drove the Norse out of northern England in the early 900s, these Norse notables made peace with their new English overlords rather than leave a country they had come to see as their home. Despite being English speakers and Catholics, these lords maintained family and commercial ties with their ancestral Scandinavian homeland. William's early attempts to bring the Norse-oriented north of England under his rule involved appointing native English earls, usually of Viking descent, to govern the region on his behalf. The first, Copsig, suffered a serious career setback when he was murdered in 1067. Another, Gospatric, would openly support the rebels. Finally, in January 1069, William sent a Norman named Robert Cummins to rule the North on his behalf. Upon his entry into York, Lord Robert constructed a castle and appointed two Normans named William Mallet and Robert Fitzrichard to govern the city and county. As Cummins established himself in York Castle, his 700 armed retainers began terrorizing the English population, stealing their possessions. If any man resisted, the Normans dragged them into the streets and beat them to death in front of their screaming wives. These atrocities prompted Egelwine, the English Bishop of Durham, to warn Robert Cummins that God would punish him. The very next morning, January 31st, 1069, an English mob smashed open the gates of Durham, ran amok through the streets, and killed every Norman they could find. Earl Robert fled to the bishop's palace, but the mob set it ablaze and he perished in the flames. According to local lore, the fire threatened to spread to English houses, but the English rebels knelt in prayer and God extinguished the flames. With Norman authority in the north crumbling and Earl Gospatric openly supporting the rebels, Edgar Aylthing, the last English king of England, made a bid for power. Coming into England from Scotland, Edgar enjoyed the support of King Malcolm III of Scotland. English rebels happily proclaimed Edgar to be their king, and they gained further support when King Swain II of Denmark sent a fleet of 300 ships in support of the uprising. This fleet was comparable in size to the one that brought William to England in 1066. Swain and Edgar Aylthing joined forces in Northumbria and seized the city of York. Further uprisings erupted in Devon and Cornwall. Norman power in England came close to crumbling, and if the rebels had acted in concert, it may well have. King William left the southern uprisings to the local Norman lords and hurried north with his main army. As King William approached York around Christmas, the rebels and their allies chose to hide. The rebel English concealed themselves in the wooded hills while the Danes withdrew to their ships, anchored in the Humber River. King William secretly approached the Danes and offered them a fortune in gold and silver if they withdrew. Sensing a chance to reap reward without danger, the Danes accepted Norman treasure and abandoned the English to Norman vengeance. In the dead of winter, King William divided his army into raiding parties to slaughter livestock, burn crops, and destroy villages. By doing so, King William hoped to deprive the rebels of food and recruits. 
In carrying out his terrible orders, William's army spread out over a hundred square miles as far north as the River Tyne. Wherever they went, the Normans put villages, wheat fields, pastures, and whole villages to the torch. If the Normans could not take livestock, they slaughtered them and burned their corpses, leaving nothing for the peasants. Norman knights carried out wholesale slaughters of men to deprive the rebels of potential recruits. Some knights grew so callous that they pinned down boys and disemboweled them. The dead lay in heaps on muddy village lanes. Those who survived ate pet dogs, stripped bark off trees, and made bread with moss. Along with Norman atrocities, the English were abandoned by their own lords. King Malcolm, seeing nothing left to plunder in the north, went home with a sullen Edgar Aylthing. Bishop Egelwine, who egged on the rebels to begin with, robbed Durham of its treasures and went into exile. Like the Romans he so admired, King William made a desolation and called it peace. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.